to set office, to set office, and obey the Constitution and the laws of the United States, to obey the Constitution and laws of the United States, and Oklahoma, and Oklahoma. I welcome you. Thank you. Number six, reorganization of school board to A, elect a president, B, elect a vice president, and C, elect a clerk. Um, I'm going to move the A um, as they are with James as president, myself as vice president, and Randy as clerk. Item number seven, discussion with possible action on encumbrances and financial reports for the 2014-2015 school year. That would be me, Mr. President. Thank you. You have the floor, Miss Nancy. Thank you. Um, I have to very close at hand. Might, no, 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 no. No, you just sit there and I'll just stand. Just okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, just a, um, a little quick review. Of, um, if you'll notice, there's probably a, a few new reports in your board packet this time. And um, uh, we wanted to show you what our software will really do. But, and, and they're good, uh, but they're, they're, you don't have a report that the software will generate that shows comparison of years that will actually uh, chart the financial movement and position of the district that you can look at in one report each month. So you charge me with the responsibility of developing something like that, and I have, I have a draft for you. And um, I want to, what I, my main goal is to actually show you where the money comes from and where the money goes. And do it and give you either both a recap of the revenue as, as well as behind it, a report that shows all the detail. And it's a three-year comparison. It's two prior years of actual experience or actual revenue and two prior years of actual expenses. And then compare it to this fiscal year and where you are in the budget. And every month you will know at that point in time what your projected fund balance is at the end of the fiscal year. Based upon, of course, and it can vary because of the movement. Now, at this time of year, just to let you know that, you know, people are ordering supplies, there's lots of things happening, cleaning supplies, so forth and so on. So, um, it's, it's going to be moving a little, but um, when um, Ms. Goodner comes back, I'll be sitting down with her, and I, I've highlighted mine in yellow uh, to actually let her um, uh, ask her if we can drill down a little further. You don't want to get something in your detail that says miscellaneous uh, state revenue. Mm -hmm. Why? I mean, why would you not want to? Because you want to know what makes up that miscellaneous state revenue below that, where you can say, oh, wait a minute, you know, this many years not coming in like it has in the past, or we're not getting as much as we did in the past. So there's just a lot, and this should do it with ease for you. Now, um, what I've done here, and I'm going to hand it to you, let me just pass that around, It'll be fine. What I've got here is what I explained to you while ago. I'm just going to take about three more minutes of your time, because I want you to take this home and have a chance to look at it and give me any suggestions you would like, too. Um, this is the one with the recap on the top, and I don't have the numbers in it yet, but if you'll look at the back, on the, the two pages there, they have a lot of numbers, don't they? And what I want you all to be able to know is how we spend the money, which is your, that's like we spend it for salaries, we spend it for benefits, we spend it for supplies in the classroom, we spend it for utilities, blah, blah, blah. 
That will be, that's how you spend it. And that's what this report is at the back. It's by object. But also, I'll pull that up, and on that front recap, I'm going to actually show you where we spent the money. Where do we spend the money? And that's like an instruction, and so forth and so on. It'll have percentages next to it, where you'll be able to see that. So this should be a very good working tool where you can chart, like I said, the financial movement of the district and see where we are. Now, if you look at this expense report, this pretty much is a pretty good detail of how we spend our money. It can get a little more detail, and I'm going to do that by changing some of our OCAS codes to drill on down instead of rolling it up to, to a bold code. I want to be able to uh, share with you um, like I said, where, where you will know whether we are decreasing our expenses. And just to let you know, as I've gone through this process and I've developed this report, what I'm seeing is that we're definitely, we've stopped the deficit spending from our fund balance. So we're in a real good uh, position, I feel like, and we've made the turn. And I think that we're moving up. And um, so that will be reflected in, and I think that there may, there's been discussion, and Mr. Cox, I don't want to steal your thunder, so I'll just wait until you talk about that later. But, uh, that, well, that we will be having a board meeting just for finances where I can explain to you, and some of you are new to the board, but not new to the community or to this district necessarily, but um, explain to you that strange animal called school finance and to show you in one hour how to read this report and know exactly what you're looking for and what to ask for. Okay? So I think you're going to like that. Right. You like this so far, Mr. Williams? Yes, I do. Okay. I like now, the ad valorem report. Let's uh, let me hand this out. I want you to know that on that expenditure report, there's a difference. When you start the year, this is what you sign on for, and that's your estimate of needs. And when your auditor prepares this estimate of needs, I can tell you right now, they're not going to go out there and let you budget all of what you collected last year. Because what it is, it is meant to be a conservative budget tool. So, but the, I, I, I feel like the auditor got a little too conservative because he didn't budget any or let us budget any hardly of the grants. And there's, you know, we have $500,000, $600,000, in grants. So uh, that, uh, that's why we had to follow that supplemental, and we all approved that last month. Mm -hmm. But the beginning budget was $8,400,000 and some change. Because we've added all this, you as a board approved the supplemental to add more grant money into the budget. Now we're at about eight million nine something, or nine nine million three. I don't know. I've got to go back and look. I used to be able to keep these numbers in my head. Uh, but if you look at this this revenue report, this report here is one that is going to give you everything you need to know about where we get our money locally, because our our budget is made up of local, intermediate, state, and federal monies. So there's a lot of money there, and uh, it's very strange. I, I know you'll be very interested in this being new on the board and so forth as well. But um, what I will do is I will um, uh, have, um, I'll call it cheat sheets, and where to go, what line item to go to when you want to know this. What about. But the bottom line is, and this is just, if you'll look at the second page of this detailed summary, this revenue, See at the bottom where it's, I've shown you where our fund balance is, and I highlighted it in yellow. Mm -hmm. So for the 2013 year, mm -hmm. what our fund balance was, what it was for the 13-14 year coming into the, that year, what it was coming into the 14-15 the fiscal year, and if you'll look at the very bottom of the amended collected column in the blue column, at the bottom, you will see the increase in operations. That was, that's what we call a fund balance. It's your increase in operations to carry over 
and you can see what that number is that I'm projecting at this time, which I think is says a lot for you as board members and how you, you all have assisted in weathering this storm. I thank you, Ms. Nancy. You are welcome. Thank you so much. Okay. Number looks good. Okay, so any suggestions? I'm very open to suggestions. I mean, I wanted to uh, get this report exactly the way you want it, but I think once that we walk through it one time, when we have more time, uh, that uh, you will have no problem. You'll know exactly where to look. This is given to you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Miss Nancy. Thank, thank you. Thank you for the doing that, too. and 
application on the, uh, number 10, Therapy Works. I think it's that therapy works. Physical and Occupational Therapy. Physical and Occupational Therapy. And that's just a one of the therapy. I did have a chance to talk to the city about our water bill. We talked about it being real high and everything, and I went down and visited with uh, Cindy Tyner about it. About 40% of that bill is garbage and trash, and uh, it has not spiked or gone up in the last several months. In fact, she went back for a full year, and it's running around about the same. Sometimes we get a little more trash, and it goes up a little bit, but that's about the same. I know we were concerned we might have a leak or something going on. It's not. It's uh, it's service rendered. The water bill, you pay so much for the water, then you pay about eighty percent of that for sewer also. So double whammy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were those new computers bought me at a middle school? Was that what the bike speed is? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So the, the old ones will go maybe to the elementary? In that kind of a little time? We always got the leftovers. <laughs> no, we actually had newer computers. Okay. Oh, wow. yeah. I said teachers. And then we just did a replacement of teacher um, computers as well. Because we had some that would not run our smart boards oh, with a high enough speed. We were losing students' interest. I got you. Okay. I got you. Okay. It's not bad. Question about the uh, payroll change orders, and that may be something that's in there, Mr. Smith. Um, there's $36,690 worth of payroll change orders for this month. What is that? I'm, I did not look at those. I'm needing to be able to address that. I know that, that one of my suggestions is, is that each time we have a change order, is this on, on which ones are these on? It's uh, some employees. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll go back and, and detail that for you and we'll let you know. We'll send it to all the board members and let you know what that is. A lot of times when there's change orders, they're, they're addressed with bond funds for, for, you know, for different things. You're very much aware of that. And uh, uh, these aren't bond funds, though. No. So I have no idea what those are. And bond funds, you know, you definitely, the superintendent will write something up in your board packet telling you why the change order is necessary. I have not seen this.
motion to accept the encumbrances and financial report. Second. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> James Cox? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Jamie? Yes. James Williams? Yes. Item number eight, vote to approve or not approve the resignation of Ms. Angel Ellis as JON coordinator. Concern, please accept this letter as official notification of my intentions to be released from the position of JLM coordinator. I have appreciated the opportunity but feel that my lack of experience and training is hindering the progress of this program. I would like to offer my services until the end of the month. I would like to consider the 27th of February as my last day as JLM program coordinator. In the meantime, I will try to be as helpful as I possibly can in completing any unfinished task. I look forward to be of assistance to the school in any way I can. Once again, thank you. Sincerely, Angel Ellis. Thank you, Miss Ellis. A little bit more than I thought it was going to be. It's just a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Motion to approve. <clears throat> I make a motion to approve the resignation of Angel Ellis and stay on the floor. Second. Yes. James Cox. Yes. Jamie. Yes. 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 Please accept this letter as notification that I wish to resign from my position as fourth grade teacher at the, El at the Henrietta Elementary effective at the end of this school year's contract. It is with a heavy heart and wasn't an easy decision that I leave the school system that I have been a part of for eight years. Due to growing needs from my family, I have decided to become a full-time wife and mother. It has been a wonderful experience. I will wish my job and my co I will miss my job and my co-workers. If you require any further information from me, please do not hesitate, hesitate to contact me. Thank you for your time, Carly Wheeler. I move that we accept the resignation of Carly Wheeler as elementary teacher. I'll second. Let me see. Yes, James Cox. Yes. 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 James Williams. Yes. Item number 10, vote to approve or not approve the retirement letter from Ms. Linda Smith, elementary music teacher. I uh, yes. To Mr. Noble and Henrietta Board of Education, I will be retiring on Friday, May 25, 2015. I would like to thank you for allowing me the privilege of being a part of the Henrietta school system for the past 36 years. Wow. Henrietta is a great school with a great staff. I will miss the students, staff, and the friendships made here. Sincerely, Linda Smith. I would also like to invite the board or whoever would like to attend. We will have our fourth and fifth grade spring concert. It will be Miss Smith's last concert here, wow. 9.30, April 30th. Nine thirty. I move that we accept Miss Smith's 
I'll second it. I have to say, Ms. Smith, because she's my little judge. Karen was a dirty toothbrush one. My kids still <laughs> sing that. <laughs> Yes. Jamie? Yes. Yes. Jamie Williams? Yes. And number 11, vote to approve or not approve of the retirement letter from Ms. Sherry Allen, Child Nutrition Cook. To the school of Henrietta, I, Sherry Allen, am retiring as of the end of the school year 2014 15. <coughs> Sherry Allen. Item number 12, vote to approve or not approve the retirement letter from Linda Dockery, child, child nutrition cook also. Please accept this as formal notice of my retirement from the position of cook at Henrietta Public Schools effective 12 weeks from today, making my last day of employment May 30th, 2015. After careful consideration, I have made the decision to retire due to my physical health. Working at the school for 28 years has been a wonderful experience that has afforded me many opportunities to meet and love some awesome people. <coughs> I will miss working with these people. I am very grateful to have been part of this school system. I wish you and Henrietta Public Schools continued growth and success in the future. Sincerely, Linda Doctor. I make a motion to approve the retirement letter of Linda Donfrey, Child Nutrition Cook. I'll second. Linda C. Yes. James Cox. Yes. Jeannie. Yes. Bernie B. Yes. James O. Yes. I'm not doing 13, we'll go to 14. Just kidding. I'm just going with you. <laughs> <laughs> Number 13, vote, vote to approve or not approve the retirement letter from Ms. Norma Artisan, Child Nutrition Director. Say it ain't so. No. I'm not making that motion. <laughs> Dear Mr. Noble and board members, please accept this letter as a notice of my resignation from my position as Child Nutrition Director of Henrietta Public Schools. My last day will be June 30th, 2015. Henrietta Schools has been good to me and my family for a lot of years. They even built my home. They gave my three children the foundation to become outstanding productive citizens. My loyalties and appreciation are deep. I am leaving so excited about our new administration, the board we have right now, and the positive direction I see our school headed for. This makes it easier for me to leave my years of labor in such good hands, with good decision makers for our students and staff. I know this is a a long resignation, but I've been here a long time. <laughs> Thank you, Norm Artis. <laughs> Mr. Williams, can I interject something? Yes. I've been reviewing some of the department's processes and procedures in the different areas, and uh, I went over and reviewed child nutrition and the program and their financial position and all. And I will have to say, and I don't say this lightly, but I've been to 245 school districts across the state. And I think that that child nutrition program over there is probably one of the best I've ever seen. And I mean that sincerely. Yeah, I think we just need to give Norma a round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't know these people, but I could just tell yeah. like this one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I need a run to but I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Nutrition director. I need a second. <laughs> no one's going to second this? They don't feel like a second. <laughs> I don't think she'll be back. <laughs> okay, I'll second it. I need me a run, buddy, I guess.
Yes. <laughs> we just did that. Yes. The side joke is that no one was a classmate of this doctor. <laughs> Fourteen on the agenda. Vote to approve, not approve, updated. Oh, SSBA student retention policy. Can I ask one question? Sure, yes, sure. Kelly, on that third mm -hmm. grade retention, yes. is that pretty well the state guidelines? This is yes. Uh, we need to be in compliance with the Reading Sufficiency Act. We have not had a program to be in compliance, so by voting on this, we will now be in compliance with the state law. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So someone made the motion. Made a motion I'll, I'll second. second. Number 15, discuss or take action on E-rate bids. tell you that we're currently using MeetPoint networks for internet access and have been for the last two years. Very satisfied with those guys. Um, when we asked for bids, we asked the vendor to also supply us with uh, their ability to, for, uh, to supply us for on-site technical support, basic fire firewall services, and on-site configuration and turnout. Um, by the sheet there, you can see we received two, four, six, eight bids from eight different companies. And of those eight, uh, Meets Point was the only one that supplied all three. Some of them did uh, indicate that they supplied on the site tech support. I noticed there's a caption here that says the price is contingent on winning the bid. So is that is that their way of saying we'll let you know how the rest of the company, you know, well, that's because they also bid on long distance and local phone service. Okay. And they did not win either one of those bids, so technically they don't even have to be in here, but I included them because they did submit a bid. Okay. And that was for BTC, that's Bigsby Telephone. Mm -hmm. And you feel like any point has provided you with everything that you needed? Um, I, I do, and, and I will tell you that um, uh, th there's a big, if you, if you notice, there's a huge difference in the price. Right. Um, E-rate, generally speaking, will cover about 80% right. of the cost, and that means that the school is responsible for the remainder. Um, in, in the case of Meat Point, that uh, amounts to um, the school being... Uh, required to pay close to $1,000 a month for internet access compared to the next one in line, which is OneNet, which is a state-run internet service provider. And it would cost the school only, well, a little over 200, just under $270 a month. In the past, we have been able to, been able to cover most of the balance of that with um, Oklahoma Universal Services Fund money, which is Oklahoma's E-rate. I, I believe we're probably the only state um, 
that offers that to local schools and libraries. There is a, currently, they're kind of, they're going through some changes. This is run and headed up through the Corporation Commission, the Public Utilities Division. I've made a couple of trips to some technical conferences. They're wanting to change the rules. Uh, and in fact, did change the rules on this midstream after the fact last year, which required the school to pay there at the end of the fiscal year somewhere around five or four thousand dollars out of pocket. We're still waiting on some, um, I guess, some determination on, on whether what they have done is legal or not, and we're still waiting on the um, corporation commission to make some more decisions. Yeah. Um, for changing the rules if they're going to or not. But if, if we take them completely out of the picture and don't consider them uh, for what we have here, then what you're looking at on a monthly out-of-pocket expense for the school are those figures down there at the bottom, approximately. Now, one, one of the reasons that I like Meat Point is uh, because of the 24-7 technical support, they're constantly monitoring their, our network. They know when we're down before we know that we're down. Um, part, part of my concern about all this technology and stuff is security. It's critical that the school be secure, feel secure and safe that, uh, with our financial data um, and especially with the kids and stuff. Um, an example of a report that was sent out from the guys at Meat Point for a 12-hour period from 5 p.m. on uh, March the 4th until 5 a.m. on March the 5th. Now this is their network. This is part of their head-in firewall, firewall services that we uh, requested or asked for. So the head end of their network was able to stop in that 12-hour period almost 500,000 attacks, attempted attacks from China, the Republic of Korea, the Ukraine, most of it came from China, some from Turkey and some from Poland. Those things never got to us. We didn't have to worry about it. Okay. No one else has that. No one else offers that who submitted a bid. Hmm. To me, that is very important. Um, it's also because I have a lot to do. Um, it's important for me to be able to make one call when we're down, I have a problem. I can make one call to meet point. They take care of it. It's also important to me because um, it takes a lot of high dollar, high end equipment to make our network run and keep it running. We don't, we, we've got some old equipment in place that we, you know, so far, so good. It continues to work. But I have had in the past one or two switches to fail. I've had a um, content filter to fail. And these guys have loaner equipment that they will configure for us, bring it down, install it, get us back up and going until we can get ours repaired. So to me, that's important. I will tell you that regardless of which one you guys want to choose, well, no, I'm not going to say that because I, I don't know anything about Dodson or Telecom. Um, or even BTC. I do know a little bit about AT&T. I won't say a whole lot about that, but I'll pick other than I hope you do not choose AT&T based on past experience here at the school. Okay? Mm -hmm. Not a personal thing. It's past experience here. The other guys, uh, for the most part, if you decide to go with one, ne one, uh, one net suddenly, or even Wind Street, uh, I can tell you that we will have internet access. We will have internet. All of them use AT&T, though. All of the others use AT&T for the last, the last For the mile. last mile. And, yeah. and what that means is, generally speaking, all of these companies, they have to use someone to get here. It's either going to be Suddenlink, and, and actually Suddenlink is our last mile through, through Meat Point now. Uh, it was, we did have it with Cox. After at and I will tell you, AT&T, and it's, and it's kind of uh, laid out here, when we had AT&T, we requested a bandwidth upgrade. They promised us a bandwidth upgrade. We went nearly a whole year. We never got it. Um, a lot of their technical support, they moved out of state. I have no one to call. If we call someone, it's, I don't know who we're going to get. I don't know what state we're going to get. They don't know anything about us. That bothers me. 
that to me is unreliable. Uh, now their network is probably, for the most part, reliable. But because these guys, the rest of these guys will, uh, aside from suddenly, the rest of these guys will use AT&T for their last mile, then that means that AT&T will have to run fiber, will have to get fiber up to, for the most part, the high school. They'll get it up, to, up the road. We'll have to trench and, and run conduit from the roadway or the right-of-way or whatever over to the building. And then we have to get, uh, again, conduit they want inside for their little piece of fiber to go over to the closet, which is in the high school. If any of you been in there, it's a very small mm -hmm. place. Yes. They will want a space pretty good size for their equipment, and we'll probably have to have some more power in there. Now, does it amount to more than this almost uh, $1,000 a month or, or this $700 or $600 a month difference that we'll be paying? I don't know. So your recommendation is meet point? My recommendation is meet point. However, I know that, you know, financial situation, and as you know, we have a technology co-op. There are seven other or six other school districts in our co-op. Three others um, do have meet point, and I've told all of them, and I will tell you that, you know, it's, bottom line, it's up to you. Money's a big deal. Um, it, it's, a, it's a huge deal. We don't know what's coming up with the shortfall at the state level. Um, you know, if, if this 700 or $800, whatever it is a month, is going to be a big deal, then, then you should consider one net. If I was going to pick between the two, it would be Meat Point or One Net. And Meat Point has more of the stuff that I feel better about. It doesn't mean that One Net is not a good service. But they kind of, it's somewhat, I won't say that it's unfair, but they're, it's a state funded, state run program. So they kind of get a few extra perks. So it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. But but we'd have to run the AT&T. It would be AT&T. Yeah, we'd, and we'd have to wait on AT&T to get that done. So, and perhaps they're better at getting that done than they were when we had AT&T. I don't know. Well, I'm, you know, that's just the way it is. I'm not. You know, you guys can make the decisions. So. that we continue with Randy's recommendation to continue with me point. I'll second Randy. Thanks for the input. Thank you. Let me see. Yes, James Thomas. Yes. Jimmy? Yes. Randy. Yes. yes. Item number 16, discuss or take action on a voluntary renewal contract for the uptime for IP form system. I recommend that we table this issue at this time. Randy and I have talked about it at length. And maybe wait until we see what our financial picture looks like, maybe. And, and then also you're going to do some bids on that or look into well, it. Here's what I have found out on that. No, number one is one of the reasons we were able to get this, and I know it's expensive, is because we, we purchased, it, purchased it as a service which made it um, E-rate eligible, which generally speaking means that E-rate would, aside from the handsets, the actual telephones, uh, E-rate would pay 80% of that bill. And they will, assuming that they okay it, they will pay 80% of this bill again, except that they are phasing out funding for that. So if that's $30,000 and E-rate pays 80%, that means they'll pay $24,000. This year, they'll pay 80% of that 80%, and they'll go down 20% every year. Okay. So still, um, you're looking at uh, probably E-rate, if it comes through, and they okay it, paying about $20,000 of that bill. Now, for us to purchase the system outright, not including maintenance or service and support, 
I, I don't have anything official, but just over the phone, a quick calculation on their part, somewhere around $20,000 for us to buy it out, and we own it. But we pay for the service. But you pay for the service and the maintenance and stuff, which could be, again, mm -hmm. guessing, maybe mm -hmm. somewhere around three or $4,000 a year. Part of the thing with voice over IP is that we have to pay for licensing. For every phone that we use, there's a license involved with it. And if, another thing, if you decide to table it, which is fine, then you probably need to make a decision to have another board meeting by next, the end of next week sometime, because we have about until, I'm going to say the 21st, maybe a week after that, a few days after that, to get all of our E-rate paperwork in, or we miss out on E-rate funding, and then E-rate is a non-issue at that point. No. We may not do that. Okay. Table motion is withdrawn. Uh, no, yes. 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 I'm number 17. Discussion. Take action on Gabbert contract for web hosting. Services people decided that they were just going to cut it out completely. So E rate covers none of it. So if we choose to continue with Gabbert for our website and web hosting, that would be the cost. There are other companies out there that offer similar services. I'll be honest with you, I haven't had time to collect enough data to compare apples to apples. Um, there, there are some that, that claim to be less expensive. Some have claim to be uh, or slightly more expensive. Are you satisfied with this company? I'm satisfied with it because it's easy enough for me to use and it's easy enough really for the teachers to use if they choose to use it. I don't know, Ms. Uh, Snyder, Ms. Bullard could probably have some input on that. So it doesn't mean that there are not others out there that are simple to use. Can you give us an example of what you use it for? We put our lesson plans on. Web, web quests for like research information, you know, like the other things there with the links for the kids to go to. Each teacher has their own page mm -hmm. and they can use it as, their, as they feel necessary. Mm -hmm. lesson plan. Mm -hmm. um, yes. to post upcoming and that's how high school delivers lesson plans is via mm -hmm. website. Upcoming tests or study guides or resources, mm -hmm. which will be even more important when kids get home. It's also a very good communications tool, communicating with the community, the parents, the guardians. I'm not sure how many actually access it and use it. Uh, it's not Facebook, but it is there. And uh, we do have calendar uh, <coughs> calendars on there, some things that are on there that they can go get some information off of. Vote to approve or not approve naming D.D. Estes as co-custodian for activity fund effective April 1, 2015.
sorry. Yes. Item number 19, vote to approve or not approve hiring a JOM coordinator for the remainder of the 2014-2015 school year. Do you have anything on that, Ms. Fuhrer? I do not. Okay. Is there a representative from the JOM? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about this position or um, how it came about. My application to, to take over the position for the coordinator position and uh, it's just basically keeping up with the parents and trying to get the IAC to work together and run the program. I, I really can't explain much about it. I, I volunteered several years and I've been a member of the IAC committee. I've been chairperson. I, I was currently chairperson, but they had asked me to my resignation because I was trying for the position of coordinator to keep the program running because the end of the school year is coming up. Uh, there's a cultural day coming up. I'd like to take some of the students, the elementary students, on a little trip to cultural day. And I worked with uh, Billy uh, Proctor and Regina and have been uh, keeping in contact with them about the program and I just want to see it improve and benefit the kids more. Right, thank you, Ms. Nicole. What happens if there's no since y'all got it? What happens if there's no coordinator? Right now, um, you guys are collecting needs assessments. Needs assessments are going to be turned in, prepared to see where you need the money. So it's kind of a critical activity that needs to be completed um, in the near future. So I wouldn't let that go too long without a body to perform those functions. If you have someone internally who can interpret those needs assessments, get them back to the kids, and then prepare the report, then you that would buy you some time to make a decision, but it's kind of what others do. Um, they're due as soon as they can get done. Historically, who did those? Historically, who did those before we had a new coordinator here? Uh, Your next year's budget is going to be based on this bet they took care of. Okay. I've been at JOM. I deal with the, the Title VII, which it's you know it's a cousin, but it's not totally. I think last year you had a coordinator at this time. Yeah, you know, we had an employee now. last year that was Step coordinator. Step 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 Norman was our coordinator last year. Miss yeah. yeah. Norman was our coordinator last year. She was a coordinator and took care of that and, and so on. And I know they posted this application for this job. I hadn't talked to Mr. I hadn't talked to Mr. Noble, but if you don't mind me interrupting, did I understand that you tabled an item all ago? No, the motion was. You didn't. So I thought you maybe if you did, you were going to have another meeting within a week. And if you were, I might suggest you do that and give Mr. Noble. Because I mean, somebody situation. here can turn in those to Billy Proctor education if, as long as it's collected and turned in. The kids are probably going to be bringing them back pretty soon. Um, so as long as that information is forwarded on, it's not like you're going to lose gap in, in funding or anything, that, but they'll just need it. Um, and there's a report that goes with it. So, um, 
So are you volunteering to do it when you said you I did the case? I think it's coming to them. We're going to make sure that we don't have a problem. We're not going to drop the ball on you whatsoever as far as the shop. I think I already played the line there. I received the needs. I received yeah. the needs. Okay. Yeah, that needs and everything. I expect it to be in the Thursday folder, probably, or something like that. I thought we were already getting the needs to give it to that stuff. We sent out a title seven that we're going to send out. It's exactly the same thing. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, we, you know, like Norma puts bids out, and look how much she saves. So I think any time you can put bids out, and they're reliable, and I mean, we can, mm -hmm. they have good references. Motion to table. Number 22, more to consider and take possible action in the presence of the, in the absence of the president and or the clerk to appoint an acting president and or acting clerk for the school district to execute any and all documents pertaining to settling the maturities, the date, the time, and the place of the bond sale. I like that motion. <laughs> Item number 23, board to, board to consider and take action on the resolution determining the maturities of and setting a date, time, and place for the sale of the $1,200,000 building bonds of this school district voted and approved on March 3, 2015 and designating the bond council for the issuance of bonds.
this is from Andy Davis. Ms. Estes, please find attached the agenda items for Monday night's board meeting. There, these are to be, are to set the bond sale date. The docs to sign Monday will follow in the mail. The board will need to decide on a date they can meet for a 12 noon special meeting to sell bonds. Please have the board select either March 26th or 27th for the meeting date. Thank you, Andy. Why does it have to be in the Yes. Yeah, they do that every year. Yeah. Yeah. So, banks are open at that time. Yeah. 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 Twenty six or twenty seven? It's a Thursday and a Friday. Twenty seven works better for me actually. Twenty seven might possibly yeah. That works really well for her then. Yes, that's the perfect thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not gonna table it we're gonna we'll we'll have to table it and then have a special meeting. This is this is asking for us to set a special meeting. So oh okay. Mm -hmm. Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be here on next week too. Next week's spring break. And it's just a meeting to sell the bonds. I don't think we all have to be here for one week. Okay. We'll need at least three of us on the twenty seventh, yeah. March twenty seventh. What does the last work mean you know, the designating bond council? Designating bond council for the issue of bonds. The main slate the name? Designating bond council. On the agenda I said and designating bond council. On the issuance of bonds, is that already, well, designating, said? designating the bond council, usually the bond council is either Tom Hilburn's group or Floyd out of uh, wherever, but you don't have to really, when it says, could you get by tonight with saying designee as uh, recommended by our um, We may have to name them. Just table it and do this. So can we table this and do it all on that special board meeting day? Yes. We can. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Okay. okay. So the twenty seventh, we're not going to sell bonds that day. That's the day we've got. We have to have a special meeting prior to that. Yes. We can do it all at the same time, right? Yes. Yes. yes, we should be able to do it all. We should be able to do it all. Tomorrow we will call. Uh, our bond advisor, and we will review all of this with them. I didn't know I was going to be answering questions tonight, <laughs> so uh, we'll but we'll perform our due diligence, and we'll get back with you tomorrow. We'll email uh, Mr. Williams, and he can get that information sure. to all of you. Okay. Sounds good. So, March twenty seventh. Next special meeting. Special meeting. Is it a Friday? Yes. March 27th. High noon. To sell bonds for the purpose of selling bonds, we don't want to sign the bonds. Mm -hmm. It's March 27th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 <coughs> <coughs> Item number 22, vote to. I don't know, 24, vote to approve or not approve allowing monthly town hall meetings to be held at. pertaining to item number 23? Yes, it is, because did they not send a resolution um, attached to an email or something? Because to consider taking it on a resolution determining, let's see. Let's see. I'm sorry, this is the first time I've seen this, so it's hard for me. You're voting to set the time and the place. That's what 
you're doing today. And that is for the 20th, and that is the 27th? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're voting on. Okay. Is to, that, that is the time that you're setting the time in place. Right. So that we just okay. need to, that's what we're voting on. So we really don't need to table this item. You don't want to table it. I'm sorry. Yeah. The and the time for the <clears throat> And this is to sell office. Yes. Okay. And here's the resolution. Yes. Right here. Okay. I've never seen this. Don't y'all think I'm incompetent, but I've well, not seen this. Okay. Just send the day. Send the day. Got you. So I move that we set a date for the special meeting on March the 27th at 12 o'clock mm -hmm. to consider and take action on the resolution. Number 24, vote to approve or not approve, allowing monthly town hall meetings to be held at the high school campus. Do we not have policy in place about this? It seems like when I came to board members, I mean board meetings previously, that there was a policy of a user's fee and maybe an insurance? Yes. There is. There's yes. policy number GK, and really we don't have to take any action on this. We certainly don't mind this community using our school for anything. But the policy has been in place since April 18th of 2008. And I think as long as they meet the qualifications of this policy, well, they, they wouldn't have to come before the board to be approved and just, if they meet these qualifications. Well, and yeah. isn't that at the superintendent's discretion, yes, the is. allowance yes. for that? Yeah. My question is, um, monthly town hall meetings. My question is regarding, it says, the wordage says, allow monthly town hall meetings, but I'm uncertain. Who is having town hall meetings? I think it's this individual here, Mr. Sherr. Sure. Okay, and, and, and is I don't know who the participants would be. I think it would be open to the community one to be understood. Yeah. <coughs> but that policy has been in place for a long time, and, it, and it, it's written by the State School Board Association, and it protects your school um, for liability and that sort of thing. If someone gets injured or something. I have some I have some concerns just about um, it's talking about having um, this is talking about um, sustaining resources from the front and by citizens see a positive change. I'm concerned with you know who 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 is coming. What group is coming? This doesn't outline anything. You know, and it's already, it's, um, the email even speaks negatively of the city. And if they're having town hall meetings, why are they having them in a city hall? Point noted. You know, why would they have to be here? Yeah. And they're talking about bringing people in from out of state to perform some advisory committee, and I think this really falls under the city, not us. And uh, you bring up a good point. That means that that could be a, a change of those individuals and agencies and representatives that might be coming in and out of the school right. at different times throughout the course of their meetings, and people that we don't know anything at all about on our campus. You know, typically um, when we utilize that policy and those request use of the facilities, we know pretty clear who's coming into the building. Um, if it's the Boy Scouts or, you know, it's, we have a pretty good idea of who's coming in. So. This is pretty vague. One of the things we need to do too in the future is looking at this fee schedule. Yeah, it's yeah. What I remember was twenty five dollars. We've actually passed that this year that doesn't and there is no fee. Yeah. Right. But then you have to pay right. someone to come up in the building and stuff, oh. you know, and yeah. I that was the right. yeah. 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 keeps yeah. coming up. We keep looking at it right. back and forth. Um, but no, we've passed already this year that there was no fee. 
the school year there's three. Mm -hmm. So we would have to look at it again. So it's a very thing to for this report. Was, was it there something ahead. about it? Was there something? Yeah, I see liability insurance. So was there a, a uh, an amount on that liability insurance? What they had to that would be provided by the But was there like a certain amount of liability insurance they had to have? I mean, the, I think it says it in the policy. Mm -hmm. I was thinking it was, but it doesn't work like this. You have to sign a whole harmless agreement with the district. Well, the way I read this, they just wanted every month. Every this month. policy's been oh, right. This is not current. Is this current? No. Well, I don't think any of this is the last updated policy that we just did. I mean, uh, forgive me. I mean, some parts of it are parts that we took whenever we updated the policy. But there is an updated policy. Yes. Yes. We just did that recently, within the last six months. So it would be recent. Yes. They don't have to sign that, do they? Thank you. So we didn't take any action on that. Yeah. We're actually required. Yeah. Well, we have to approve it, not the right. We're asking to. Well, oh, it needs to be tabled. Right. So we should take no action on the table? I'd like to table it so we can see the new policy. I'd like to see the new policy myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But, I mean, it is what it is. I, mean, I can't do anything about it. We can't do, change the policy, right? Um, no, it's not going to change it. Uh, Which pleasure? I put a motion on the table to table, table it <coughs> and to review the new agreement or our new board, of, board of policy. I haven't seen the new board of policy, so I don't know what it is. But I put a motion to table. Send it back to the um, I, vote, um, I don't say motion to table, I vote. I would rather vote no. Is it not perfect? I think this needs to stay within the city. I'll withdraw my motion. Okay, I'll step the brand new motion. Yes. Jean? Yes. 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 Not approved. Okay, item number 24, or 25. Report to the board by HESA. Six principals report. I'll go first. Okay. Um, we have our uh, STEM outreach uh, hosted by the United States Naval Academy uh, coming uh, here to train kindergarten teachers and uh, surrounding community teachers on April 8th. They actually moved it up to the 8th, and it'll include an all day program instead of just half a day. And we'll be hosting that at the high school. So that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty awesome for us, and especially in light of our pastor for bond issue. Uh, Coach Ray uh, has issued a memorandum talking about what we've done over the, over the last few, uh, few weeks in uh, our athletics. We apologize for not being able to be here. So it's in our Class 4A basketball tournament that we're uh, at the high school gym. Um, <clears throat> that tournament includes Fort Gibson, Hilldale, Stillwell, Manford, Broken Bow, <coughs> Ada, Plainview, Bing, and Tecumseh. Uh, he wanted to point out the Henrietta's men and women's high school basketball season concluded February 27, 2015. The men and women were both defeated in the second round of the regional tournament 
The middle school basketball season concluded February 16th, and the Big Six Middle School All-Star Game is being played this evening at Morris. The Henrietta swim team had two participants qualify for the state swim meet. Ch uh, Cherie Graham medaled at the state meet by placing third in the backstroke. The Henrietta Nice powerlifting team competed in the regional powerlifting meet last Friday at Antlers. At this meet, Garrett Flannery won his respective class. And Henrietta men's, women's, golf, men's and women's golf teams were set to open their season last week, but the tournaments were canceled due to inclement weather. Their season will open this week. The Henrietta men, men's and women's outdoor track season will get underway this week with the high school track teams traveling to Glenpool on Friday, March 13th. The Henrietta women's slow pitch softball will open their season on Thursday, March 12th, the Okima Festival. The Lady Knights were originally scheduled to open up this evening with Omogi, but the game will be rescheduled because of the 4A basketball tournament being held here at our facilities. The Henrietta Choir <clears throat> traveled to Tahlequah this past week, uh, Saturday for district contest, and uh, yes. all of our kids qualified for state. Yes, they did. Oh, all of them. As a group. As a group. Yes. 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 <laughs> and so boys, girls, everyone qualified, and we'll be competing the state tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that's great news and yes. good for our kids. Um, <coughs> and also there's an attached calendar that was submitted to Mr. Noble and myself and the staff for doing that. Spree sports. So that's what we have going on in the high school right now. We're just prepared to wind down the year and get state testing underway. Yeah. Yay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Glad to see you back on your feet after what two bouts with the flu? Two bouts of the flu and just other things. My, my my kids being sick. It's been it's been quite a ride the last month or so. So everybody's healthy and healthy and happy at the Biden household. <laughs> we did get to go see the uh, or tried to go see the swim team when they were in the finals. Miss Cherie Graham and Caprice were there, and the place was so full we couldn't even get in. You know, but I you know I, I was, I was gonna. You know, pull out my card. You know, <laughs> but there were some, there were some people that there they were there to see their relatives and they couldn't get in. Oh, so wow. I had no. Was, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go eat. You know, <laughs> we want to congratulate Caprice and uh, Sheree on the good job they did. Yes. And Miss Graham. And Miss Graham. And Miss Graham. Right. Graham. So yeah, okay. appreciate that. Who's next? Matt Locker. Yeah. Matt Locker. Yeah. Next. Um, I did want to give a shout out to our middle school tennis. Yes. Since Brad's not here, um, my son plays tennis. Yeah. That's the only reason I know all of this. Um, they competed with 16 schools on Friday, um, 8 to like 6.30, long day for them. But they all did really well. Um, my son and Keaton Mollis were in the doubles match, and they got fourth out of 16 oh, schools. Right. So mm -hmm. we were pretty mm -hmm. proud of them. And also our middle school choir competed as well. Mm -hmm. And I think they got some. Yes, eight medals. We got we ended up with nineteen some district medals. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Impressive. So, so there's a little shout out to our middle school kids as well. Um, recently we got a um, or we acquired a grant from Creek Nation. Um, and it is STEM related. I know that's an area that we're our vision is kind of pushing towards. So I wanted to read a little bit about what this grant is gonna provide our elementary students. Um, uh, recently, we had three of our teachers that were trained. To, it's called Botball, Junior Botball, and it is um, these little robots, but they're going to learn how to train them, basically. Um, so I'll read a little bit about the program real quick, just from the website, so you can kind of get an insight as to what this is going to provide our students. Uh, this sustainable, sustainable program provides reusable equipment, software, standards aligned curriculum, and professional development opportunities to enable you to teach your elementary students to write code and cover engineering design standards. The hands-on activities focus on improving computational thinking skills and promoting mastery of concepts. The program culminates in, uh, in one-day public events where students showcase their robot designs and solutions. Um, you may wonder what is this, what skills will these students learn for, by participating in this. Um, participants will learn how to write code in the C programming language. Learning to code imp uh, improves computational thinking skills and, pro and problem solving, which both relate to improved math performance and problem solving skills. Students will also get real life direct applications 
of the engineering design process, participants gain valuable practice with critical thinking, decision making, collaboration, analytical skills, adaptive learning, flexibility, uh, creative innovation, and communication. Um, on the on the March 2nd, when I did the training, we have three teachers. Mrs. Corn's a third grade teacher. Mrs. Stidman, she's one of our special ed teachers, and she also works with our gifted students. And uh, Kelly James were the teachers that were trained. The really unique thing about this program is that they had specific, or for the grant, to write the grant, and um, we had to have very specific criteria for the students that we selected. Um, it was that it had to be made, our team had to be made up of 75% Native American students and that they had to be half boys and half girls. Um, so our team is comprised of 16 students, or, let's see, yeah, 16 students, 14 of them are Creek, two are Seminole, so we really, you know, wanted to take pride in that, in that fact of our Native American students that we have in our school, and half of them are boys and half of them are girls, and for the most part they're fifth graders, um, but I got really tickled at the whole training process because um, our teachers took it on as a challenge. So I know our students are just really going to eat it up. They have this robot and they write, get on the computer. We have the software loaded onto 12 of our computers in the lab. And the teachers in that day training, they said it was pretty intense because they had to cram everything into one day. And they're going to meet once a week with these students to train them at different challenges that they have to try to meet. Um, but Mrs. Corn, I got tickled at her because she, she took the robot home with her that night because she couldn't get it to accomplish the task, the challenge that was at hand, and she took it home and played with it until she got it to complete its task. <laughs> so I know that if it does that with them, our, you know, that, that spark of innovation and, and engineering and design and all that, we'll have that same spark within our students. So we're really, and they'll compete May 9th. No. And it'll be an old movie, yes. so um, we'll keep y'all uh, a reminder of that when it gets closer so that we can yes. be sure and be a part. Is it a tech? Uh, I'm thinking it was, I think was it's it tech. Um, it's at the dome. The dome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. I'm thinking it was, t was it 10000 Pretty close. Somewhere around Somewhere there. Around there. Mm -hmm. And all we were required to pay is our entry fees into yes. that. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Good. That to the competition, so Thank you very much. Our teachers will also um, attend a presentation from Voyager Sopress this Wednesday, March the 11th. Uh, they are going to come in and present their uh, core reading curriculum. They also have an intervention piece that we are very excited to um, implement at the elementary. Uh, we have not, per se, had an intervention reading piece. So with us passing the bond issue, it is going to allow us to, um, to get this for our students. And it's really going to be helpful for our students. Let's say if we have a fourth or fifth grade student that may be two years behind in reading, we are going to be able to meet that student's needs where they are. So we are very excited to have them coming into the school. This will be pre-K through three. It's starting at one. So we have worked a schedule today out today to make sure everything is covered, but our teachers will be uh, looking at these materials on Wednesday. Uh, the writing test was February 26th. Um, the teachers and students were very happy with the prompt. Um, they didn't seem as stressed. I think it's going it's to turn out well. It's going to turn out well for us. Uh, we need to remember the PTO spring sock cop for our um, K through 5 students. This is going to happen Saturday, March 28th. And another report, our uh, world's finest uh, candy bar sales. When all our money comes in, we will make $13,200. Wow. <laughs> so, we are happy about that. Also, third grade field trip Friday to Tulsa Air and Space Museum. So we will be going Friday. How did Grant do at the, the spelling bee? I have not heard. They have not had the spelling bee, have they? Yeah, they had it Saturday. They had it Saturday. I will get a report for you. 
I'm just curious. I have not heard. So I usually try to go get We had Pemberton, Dalton, and Grant. But I will get a report back to you. I'm just curious. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Fear. Yes. So, Mr. Noble was telling me you got a $25,000 stone grant. We did. From the middle school. Middle school. From, from, from the middle school. Proud to see that. Mr. That Mine. those funds mm -hmm. will be for, uh, from what I understand, to be technology upgrades, <coughs> uh, new computers, things like that, mm -hmm. and of course, training your teachers, I believe. And, yes. Uh, and uh, all that for the middle school. So, Mr. Wine received that, I think, yes. last Monday. Mm -hmm. Very excited. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Item number 28, maintenance director's report. He's probably at the gym. Yeah. 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 29, superintendent report. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number 30, board comments. Just excited about the bond. Yeah. So Yay. Is that the watch party that night? Yes. A lot of fun to see everyone's reaction. <laughs> That was a yes. lot of fun. So it was yes. great to be a part of that. Together. Even trying to run over the principal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just want to thank everybody that voted and yes. got out. And, and you, even if you didn't vote for it, thanks for getting out. And, and uh, thank you for all your uh, elementary's hard work and PTO and everybody else at the high school, the middle school. Oh, community. Was community. Somewhere around three or $4,000 a year. Part of the thing with voiceover IP is that we have to pay for licensing. For every phone that we use, there's a license involved with it. And another thing, if you decide to table it, which is fine, then you probably need to make a decision or have another board meeting by next the end of next week sometime because we have about until, I'm going to say the 21st, maybe a week after that, a few days after that, to get all of our E-rate paperwork in or we miss out on E-rate funding and then E-rate is a non-issue at that point. No. We may not do that. I'll withdraw the motion. Okay. Table motion is withdrawn. Number 17, discussion, take action on Gabbert contract for web hosting. <laughs> I was encouraged by what I saw Joy Hockmeister say last uh, week on TV about teachers' pay. Mm -hmm. And if I understood it properly, she's wanting a $4,000 raise, cross the board raise for teachers. I'm not sure where they're going to get the money, but that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. The other thing she wants to do is add five days to the school year and pay the teachers for that five days. So that would be about a $5,700 pay raise, which would bring them up close to the regional average. And it's kind of sad that our goal is to raise them up to the regional average instead of getting above the regional average. But, you know, there's some positive things coming out of her camp right now, and I hope they do that because the, uh, the bad side of it is, as we met with our legislator and senator now, our new state senator, Roger Thompson, is on the education committee now in, in, at Oklahoma City. He's also on the Commerce Committee. 
And his, what he said is, is they're trying to not do across the board cuts this year. They are right now 6.5% short on their budget. What they're going to try to do is take their budget and go line item cuts. That is their goal to do that. The only problem with that is, is when you get to your line item, well, that's in my district. I don't want to cut that item. But mm -hmm. there is going to be um, some cutbacks. They're just not sure what. He said his advice to us was to prepare for about 6.5%. It's a lot of money. But um, I hope that they will. It seems to me that they have now realized that education is, should be a priority within the school system with our school for our state. Okay. Uh, I want to thank everybody that, uh, that went to the Education Foundation dinner. Oh, it was a pretty good time. I had some good fellowship. Miss Brown went, Miss Matlock went, but uh, uh, it was really good, and they raised a lot of money for our school system. So we're happy. We're always happy for them. Uh, it's well over ten thousand. Oh, it's well over ten. Yeah. I think he said 9,500, yeah. and that's not quite all of it. Yet. Yeah, it wasn't quite all of it, yeah. Uh, item number 31, new business. And I want to recognize Mr. Rick Enos. Hey, I'll try to be real quick. This is not good business, what i got to talk to you about. I'm going to pass these around. We had some, we had some vandalism. I didn't make a copy of one. Had some vandalism up here Thursday, Friday morning. About 1, 11.45 to 1.30. And we have, uh, no, the damage was, we thought at first, the first two windows over here, the uh, car wrecks. Later in the day, we noticed that a bus, we have, we don't have enough room to park our buses. We've, we're working on that, and we got about all of them in. But folks, we've had these buses parked out here for ages, so I'm not going to, we've been real lucky, real fortunate. Uh, but they knocked out a mini bus, the back two windows, and the driver's side of it. They knocked out the whole side, you see the yellow bus there, the whole side of one of them in that. Then uh, behind the maintenance office, there's a dump truck we have out there. They knocked off out two windows there and a light. They also knocked out a uh, freeze, frost proof uh, hydrant in the back. We thought that was water draining off the roof at once, but then we found out a little bit more drain there than it was. So that, and we're looking at, oh, they left a water hydrant. You'll see one, another water hydrant there by the maintenance office. They broke the pit off it. It probably ran quite a while. Fortunately, the city's going to work with us, I think, on that. We have a time frame that they're going to look on that so the water bill maybe won't kill us. We weren't the only community that got this. <coughs> More schools got five of their buses that same night. Uh, I saw, I had to go to Tulsa after this at noon over here, and I saw four, three buses, buses going that had more so on. I went and said, I wonder where they're going. There were no kids. They were going to El Reno, the company where, I'll work in this in a second, that where they lease buses. They went to them, picked up three loaner, five loaner buses to make it through their routes. Fortunately, we, ours was locked up, our route buses. And they bring those lease buses back to run their routes the next morning. The company worked with them on that. We met with Morris uh, administrators today here, plus Morris Police Department, our police department, and uh, you'll notice the pictures in there. The only video we had, let me use just a second, was out of the back cafeteria here is all we got of them. There was four of them. You couldn't see much. They had some clearer video, still couldn't fix a uh, picture on it, but the OS IG, if I'm saying that right, uh, they're going to send that in, and in the OSBI, they're going to send that to and see if they've got an enhancement machine, maybe get this space and stuff. Hopefully, we might get a little reward posted by that. Mr. Bine is working with the police as far as if students, if he gets any leads or any type of item like that. Probably estimating looking here anywhere from six to $8,000 of damage, and I might be light on that figure there. We got one of the buses fixed. We'll hopefully have the other bus fixed tomorrow. They'll have to do some framework on this one. Yeah, I sent all this stuff into our insurance company today. I'll shut up on that part. Now, I did leave all y'all a little packet when you first sit down there. And if you notice on this first list, this is all of a list of all of our transportation inventory. This first section is, uh, we have 13 buses, 11 big buses, two mini buses. So once you look down there where that says Freightliner 2011, that's our newest buses we have. One of them's a handicap bus, and one of them's an activity bus. 
And besides that, our route buses are anywhere from 9 to 15 years old. And you can see the mileage on them there. And uh, I've visited Mr. Lyons, of course, visited a long time with me. I've looked at some other schools. I have a list of that. And uh, they lease their buses. They lease their buses on a three-year lease. And I showed you a couple. Of, these are just beginner bids. No, no, no panic or anything. But I want to deal with Mr. Noble and come back with y'all. We'd like to get somewhere between three to four buses, not a whole fleet. You know what a brand new bus costs right now? Ninety to ninety-five thousand oh. dollars. But if we were to just replace our fleet of seven buses on one of those figures there, we're only talking a hundred to hundred and ten thousand dollars to replace our whole fleet. Now that's a yearly fee, but the first one on there is like eleven thousand dollars a year for three years will get you a brand new 2016 bus. And I asked the guy, I said, how many miles on this now? I'm kind of country, I don't know. He said 1,000 to 1,200. They drive them from the factory. That's the only items that's on that. That's the only mileage on that. So we have one of these old mini buses that we use a lot. It's got 152,000 miles out there. And those mini buses are, are pretty handy, anywhere from 14 to 19. One quote in there I have is about 24-seater. Uh, but I just wanted you to glance at some of this stuff. And the last thing, and I'll shut up here. Now, those two Suburbans, a lot of people wonder about Suburbans. You'll notice they got 100,000 miles on them for 2009s. Those save us a lot of money. We at least purchased those, and I forget what year, did you? I don't know if you remember or not what year those were paid off. But I'm talking about anywhere, like right this year, we started an elementary academic team. And, you know, you might have five, six, seven kids but we send them there. We send our tennis teams a lot of times. We send our golf teams and those things. Yeah. We send our people that have to go to workshops and so on like that. They've been a tremendous savings. I know there's a lease purchase cost, but overall, as far as you were to take a to send a minibus out there, you're gonna spend a lot more money in the long haul on that stuff. Okay, last item. You looked at that page I put right behind there. This is a bill from Interstate Diesel for the last three years. The top one up here is 12, 13 year, the middle one is 13, 14, and then this is so far this year, and this doesn't include this month's bill. Interstate Diesel, if you'll look, you see those figures, I don't have to quote them, you can see them, I've got them circled. That's what we spend in keeping these buses that are 15 years old running. And we Friday morning, after all this stuff happened Thursday morning, we run a bus route. Bus man comes over to me, one of the guys working. We got a problem. I said, what are you talking about? He said, oil pan, something blew. I had to go down to elementary. You wouldn't believe the oil that was splattered all over there. And how, how we got, he had to put 10 quarts of oil in it just to drive it out here to interstate for them to work on. So what I'm asking you is this food for thought in the near future, uh, and we'll do some more research on this lease plan, but... Are they you know, diesel buses as well? They'll be diesel as well? They're diesel Cummings engines on them. They're diesel buses, all of them. The mini buses would be a gas. If we use that, it'd be a gas. They're hard to get that frame, they tell me. You're not going to buy diesel buses for your route buses, are you? Huh? Not for route. You're going to buy diesel for route buses. <coughs> oh, yeah. Every one of them. We've got one gas, like we got one gas bus. Is <clears throat> is all we have here. That's and it's number, it's it's number eight. That's why you Oh, 15,000 miles would cover it for... Would cover us on that instance on of, what, of what we're doing that. Those uh, those talks about lease, some of them, you, we do the minor maintenance, oil filter change, uh, wearables like tires, stuff like that, or you can pay them an extra fee, 1500 and they'll do the whole thing for you. So about what does an average bus run on the routes a year? Uh, it's t been 10 to 12, something like that. But it's this stuff to look at. If you see the money we're spending, but the years, our first priority is two things on the bus, and that's morning and afternoon. Whatever activities after that, you know, if we have to cancel something, we do it. But we bring those kids in and we take them home. Mm -hmm. And I know you probably hear a lot of criticism where we have around town stuff. Why do they shut down when it looks like it's just spitting a little snow? Well, that's Mr. Noble's call. He consult. We consult together. Harold Fox drives over here from Moore's. 
Uh, we get up at 4.30 in the morning, we get out on the road, we call the police. And I'm going to promise you, if it just looks like, we call it off. Sure. You've seen Thank Facebook you. lately, or you've seen the news. Uh, we'd rather be called idiots than be called stupid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Promise you. But if y'all would, just look over that, appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Good. Good. We'll hopefully talk about the future. Thank you. Item number 32, may I have a motion to adjourn? I make the motion. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did this. HEA was uh, accidentally left off the agenda. Yeah. So could we under new business? Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm so sorry. That's okay. That's all right. Um, we just like to ask you guys to consider releasing school March the 30th for the rally that's coming up. Um, last year we took about 30 teachers on a school bus, HEA. I drove, and so we didn't have to pay a driver, and then we paid for the fuel, and we're willing to do that again this year. There were about 50 Henrietta teachers show up, and, and we represented the school well. And it was a great opportunity to put 30,000 people there, projecting 50,000 again this year. Some of the topics that will be spoken on are um, high sex testing. You know, our kids take anywhere from 20 to 26 tests from the time that they begin school until they end. We feel like they're way over tested. Um, funding of education and then teacher salaries, of course. So we'd like you guys to consider letting us out March the 30th so we can get our teachers out there again. And take a bus? Yes, please. Like I said, we'll pay for the fuel and, and myself or Alan like I'm a volunteer him will drive.